Hey YouTube, yesterday I tried to do a live video of uh, Storytime Sunday Part 9, but it didn't quite work out. So today I'm just going to do the same story in an upload, and I'm going to play the same story um, for you in an upload. Now the story is long, so I admit so I made pause and uh, come back, um, but you will get the whole story, even if it has to be in different parts. Um, so here is, again, Cowboy's um, uh, Storytime Sunday, Episode 9, Cowboy Take Me Away. I hope you enjoy this. Cowboy, Take Me Away. A short story by Rachel Esdale. You did it, Claire. You really did it. My boss sm smiled at we me with a smile that covered his whole face. I had just landed the biggest account with Ver, Ver Sands and Son with Burnaby Cosmetics. And inside I knew that this was it. This was the chance that I've been waiting five years for ever since I started at Sands and Sun Advertising Agency. This is this this was the the moment that he was going to offer me the the promotion of a lifetime as, as VP of advertising. We, we were sitting in his office adjacent to each other. And my stomach was all in knots. I knew I deserved this promotion after the work I've been doing for Sands and Son over the last five years. But I just wasn't sure if it was enough. I held my breath in anticipation and waited for Mr. Sands to continue. Claire, you know I've been looking for some time for some time for someone to replace for someone to partner with me in this agency and eventually replace me when I retire in a few years. You have shown incomparable taste and incomparable judgment in every presentation you've put forth for this company. We really value your work here. And I'm prepared to offer you the, the VP of advertising position He paused as I waited for him to continue. Y yes, sir, I understand, and I would really love that position. It's what I've been working for for, for for years, and I believe I proved myself. You, you have, Claire, you really have. But before I can offer you this position, I have one more little task for you to do anything sir i'll do anything for this company over the past six months sands and sun 
has been looking to expand our, our offices. In our research, we found this little town in Savannah, Georgia called Harrisville. It's a little town not more than 2,000 2, people live there. And it would be perfect for our expansion process, projects. And we could, we even could film there and do whatever we needed there. We wouldn't have to rent extra space if we wanted to film commercials, if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to rent out any of the buildings to potential clients, we could. This is something that no other agency d done. Could you imagine an advertising agency buying a town just to film, just to take it over and film there. It sounds like a wonderful idea, Mr. Sands. What's the problem and what do you need me for? Well, it's the mayor of the town of, of Harrisville. They're, they're stubborn and they, they don't want to even consider relocating although although our lawyers have have tried to tell them that we wouldn't we would be we wouldn't be taking the people out we would just be in inhabiting their land to make it better we would even build on their land they wouldn't have to move anywhere We've tried, my lawyers have tried, and our lawyers have tried and tried and tried, and they still won't, and stay, they still won't even consider, consider letting us, letting us take it over. What do you need from me, sir? I said. What I need from you is to be kind of a spy. Not really a spy, but uh, I need you to go the, go to Harris, get get to know the people, get to know how how they run things and and bring a report back to us so that way we can form, formulate a strategy on how to convince them to sell their land to us. After you do that, the promotion's as good as yours. Two days later, I packed up all my stuff and, and headed to Harris, Georgia. Slowly but surely, the busyness of New York City with all its traffic, lights, and people were was replaced by calm, serene, grassland with horses and cows. I marveled at the at just the beautiful landscape of the country and I couldn't wait for, for Sands and Sun to buy it so we could use it for some beautiful commercials and really make something of this place.
I was so caught up in my musings that I didn't see a cow jump in front of my car. And by the time I saw it, and I swerved to not hit it, headed towards a ditch. I covered my face with my hands while the airbags deployed with a loud pop. After the accident, I sat there for a few minutes, stunned, not believing my misfortune. Of all the things to run over, a cow? Really? A cow. I had to run over a cow. Well, I thought to myself, not really run over a cow. I missed a cow. That's why I'm in this situation. With my car in a ditch. I checked my cell phone and it was dead. I forgot to charge it. Oh no, what am I gonna do? I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. My car is in the ditch. I put my head down in my hand. I'm not a friend, but there was nothing else to do at this point. God, I know I haven't been the best person, but please get me out of this situation. I prayed. As soon as I uttered the word situation, I heard and saw a motor of a truck coming down the road. I tried to get out of the car, but the, but the door was stuck. I was afraid that the truck was going to miss me. After all, I was down here stuck in a ditch. The only thing I could do was yell as loud as I could. So that's exactly what I did. Help! 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 Hello? Nothing. The car, the truck was about to pass by without even seeing me. I knocked on the windows as hard as I could. Help! 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 I found myself. to undo my seatbelt to at least release some of the pressure on, on my on my on my on my side nothing the seatbelt would but the, the truck was about to pass I was in the middle of nowhere nowhere no phone no way to contact anybody. I don't, I didn't know what I was going to do. Please, Jesus, don't leave me out here. I started to think of every prayer I could imagine. 
and I started to say them over and over in my head. Our brother Martin. Hello? I heard I heard a voice calling me. Hello, ma'am, are you alright? Yes, hello. No, I'm I'm stuck in the ditch. Hold on, I'm a tow truck. To, I'm a tow truck to driver. Up, oh. I'm coming to help you, ma'am. Thanks. A few minutes later, I saw where the voice was coming from as he came around to the driver's side window. From what I could see, he was a man in his late 20s, early 30s, dark brown hair, and dark brown eyes. I couldn't tell how tall he was because he was stooping over to talk to me. Ma'am, I'm Declan Devereaux, the total the tow truck driver for Harrisville. I'll get you out of there as soon as I can. Just let me hook up your car to my truck. Where had I heard that name before? I know I'd heard it before, but I couldn't place where. Anyway, I'll figure I would I'll figure it out later, I'm sure. About 15 minutes later, after Declan had had hooked my car up to the tow truck, he began to pull me out. It took Devlin about five minutes to get my car upright and working again. After he was done, I, sh I stretched out my hand. Thank you, Devlin, so much. Or would you like me to call you Mr. Devlin? No, Devlin's fine. He smiled. And you are, oh, I'm sorry, I laughed. My name is Claire, Claire Morrow, and I'm looking for the mayor of Paris. Well, he's off today. Is there anything I could help you with? I didn't know who this man was and where I had heard his name from, but I didn't want to discuss Sands and Sons business with, with a stranger. So I just shook my head. No, thank you. Well, there is one thing. I need a place to stay for the night. Do you know of anywhere? Yes, there is one bed and breakfast. Helen's homey hideaway right down the street. I can take you there in my truck if you like. Sure, I'd love that. Thanks. You're welcome. We got into his pickup.
and started driving down the road. So, Declan said, what brings you to Harris? He asked again. Well, I'm here on business. I said. What kind of business would that be? Oh boy, this man was nosy. I, I didn't want to tell him anything until I spoke with the mayor and the and the town council about S Sans and son buying their their property oh just this and that i was deliberately vague and deep inside i prayed that he would stop his question What about you? I asked Declan. How long have you lived in Harrisville? Oh, I was born and bred here. Here, that's the kind of town that that Harris is. People are born. They grow up. They grow up. They go to high school. They go to middle school, and they go to, they get married, and they die here. It's one of those old-fashioned towns where people don't, that people don't see anymore. You know those kind of towns that you see on TV where everyone knows everyone, and you see your pastor at the grocery store and and you know everybody's stories, everybody's lives, and about everybody's children. It's a really community place where everyone goes to church on Sunday and the bar on Saturday night. I'd love to live in a place like that. Oh, really? Where are you from? Uh, New York. Oh, that's a long way from... That's a long way from here. It sure is, and very different. What do you do in New York? He asked again. What's with all these questions about... Why am I here? What do I do? And everything. It seemed like an innocent question, but there was something behind it. Something else that I couldn't place. And I didn't really feel comfortable answering it. I'm in business. Oh, really? What kind of business? This guy was not going to leave this alone. I'm in advertising, okay? Are you happy now? 
whoa, I didn't mean to offend you or upset you. I just wanted to know who you were and what you are. Well, you've asked that question three separate times. Like, and I told you I didn't. And you should have gotten the message that I didn't want to talk about it. Well, sorry, lady, but we won't talk anymore on that. That's fine with me, Mr. Devereaux. De I said deliberately using his surname. We drove the rest of the way in silence. About 10 minutes later, we came upon a ranch, a large ranch style home with a sign outside that said, Helen's Homey Hideaway. He pulled into, Declan pulled into the driveway and let me off. As soon as he helped me with my bags, he sped away without saying goodbye. Goodness gracious, I thought to myself, what a rude man. I knocked on the door. of the small bed and breakfast. An elderly lady with gray hair and a wide smile came to greet me. Hello, dear. Is there some... Is there something I can do for you? Well, I need a room to stay or at least tonight, maybe tomorrow. Do you have any rooms available? Sure, dear. She said, fr she said frowning when she saw my bags at the curb. Who dropped you off here? Oh, Declan Devereaux, I said with a frown. What a rude man. Is he always that way? Yeah, Mayor Devereaux can be, can be somewhat surly at times, but he's harmless. Let me get my son Roger to help you with those bags. He and his he and his wife mostly run this inn now, although it's named after me. Roger she called. Roger, we have a guest and she needs help with her, her bags. Coming mama I heard, I heard a male voice call back. It was two minutes before I saw a large stocky man who looked like a bodybuilder come down the stairs and grab my first bag. How are you there, ma'am? My name's Roger. I'm Helen Sen. My wife and I run this place. Nice to meet you, Roger. My name is Claire Morrow. Morrow.
I'm in town for a few days. Oh, welcome to Harrisville. We always love to have visitors. We don't get many around these parts. We picked up the first bag from the curb and brought it inside. My after I carry in your bags, my wife and Deb my wife Debbie will help you. Will help you at the register and show you where your room is. Great, I said with a smile. After Roger had had brought my bags in from outside. He went to get his wife, Debbie. About three minutes later, a, a, a lady with bright red curly hair and freckles came to greet me. Why, hello there. I'm Debbie Rogers' wife. Hi. I'm Claire. Nice to meet you. She said with a smile. After she had handed me the keys, I wanted to make sure I had heard Helen correctly. Debbie, yes, I thought I heard Helen say that Declan Devereaux was the mayor of Harrisville. He is. Oh, I thought he, when he dropped me off here, he told me he was a tow truck driver. Oh, he's that too. In a town as small as Harris. You, you got people doing several jobs. But there's no doubt about it. He's definitely our mayor. I gave a long sigh. And then said, he looks a little young to be the mayor. Debbie got a sad, faraway look in her eye. Last year, his father died of a heart attack suddenly. And he took over the position as mayor. That his father left. Oh! Yeah. Between you and me and the fence post, I think sometimes he's so, he's so hard on us, he's, he's so surly because he wants to prove to himself that he can do the job as good as his father did. But what he doesn't understand is we just want him to be himself. He doesn't have to try and be his father. But many people have tried to explain that to him. But his head his head is too thick to understand it. She laughed. He's a great man. He's a great man overall though. 
But I just wish he'd smile a little. Life is too short to be that unhappy. His father wouldn't have wanted him to take over the to the to take over the position if he knew that it would make him so unhappy. Well, we all do what we have to sometimes. I said, Debbie sighed, isn't, isn't that the truth? Well, see you later, Claire. Dinner's at six. Thanks, Debbie. I'll be here. I went up the long staircase to room number 26. I put the key in the lock and opened the door. It was small, but nicely furnished. With a double bed, a chip, a lamp, and and table on one side and a clock with a dresser and clock radio on the other. I put my one overnight bag that I had carried up myself and I saw that Roger I put my other bags in my room, in the corner of the room. I flopped down on the bed and thought to myself, what the heck am I going to do now? I got off on the wrong foot with the mare when I have to impress him. Four Sands and Sons proposals to, to buy the town for its advertising campaigns. What am I going to do, I sighed. And then I thought I might as well start unpacking. Dinner was quiet that night, with only myself as, as the one guest, Roger, De Debbie, and Helen talked a bit about the town, the families that lived there, and told a lot of funny stories. Before I knew it, I had forgotten where I was and felt like a part of the family. In the middle of di dinner, Helen asked, so where, so where are you from, Claire? New York. Oh, really? A city girl, huh? Debbie chimed in. Yep. Traffic lights, sirens, and subways. That's my life back in New York. Oh, we have nothing like that here, Debbie said. The busiest we get is the spring dance coming up tomorrow night. The spring dance? What is that for? 
Oh well. In a town. In a town the size of Paris, we don't get much government funding. So every year we have a huge spring dance where we set. We sell tickets, and everyone, everyone dresses up in their nicest duds and comes out and has a good time. Declan's father started it, and we just continued it. It raises a lot of money for the town, for our schools, and our programs. It's really a wonderful thing. You should come. Oh, I'm not sure I'll even be here tomorrow night. Well, if you are, we'd love to have you. That we sure would, Helen and Roger agreed. Thanks, I'll think about it, I smiled. Thinking that it would be a great way to really meet everyone in the town. And, go, and get a feel for the people like Mr. Sands wanted. Sure, count me in. Great. It's too late now, but tomorrow we will get a dress for you to wear. Unless you brought something suitable. No, I don't think I I don't think I did. And it would be nice for me to see the town anyway while I'm visiting, meet the people and socialize. So, so, so I would love to go shopping tomorrow. Great, Debbie said, I'll take you. Helen, Helen chimed in, I have to go to the post office to drop off a letter. So why don't I come with you, with you two girls? We'll have a girls' night out. Okay, Helen, Debbie said. That sounds awesome. Dinner went on with chatting and laughing and small talk. After dinner was over, I went to my room to figure out how I was going to get myself the next morning I woke up to the smell of bacon bacon wafting from the kitchen I, I pulled off the covers and put on my slippers and headed downstairs when I got there Helen was in the kitchen Morning. Can I offer you some toast and bacon? I'd love some. There's coffee perc percolating in the coffee maker over there on the counter. I looked over to where the coffee maker stood. Sure enough, there was coffee already made. It smells really good. Thank you, Helen said. Have a seat. I took a seat at the table. Helen brought me my, my coffee with bacon, toast, eggs, and pancakes. What time are we leaving to go find my dress today? 
we can leave whenever you want, dear. Debbie's up already. She just went to milk the cows. And feed the chickens. Debbie mil milks cows and feed chickens. Feed chickens, I said in surprise. Sure she does. Women can do anything that men can do, you know. I laughed. Yes, I know. It, yes, I know, but I've never heard of women really mil milking cows and feeding chickens. Well, around here they do. Around here people chip in and help other people around here women and men do the same jobs you know who I should introduce you to the store owner that we're going to meet today Esther she has her own tractor, and she plows the field just like a man can. Really? I didn't think that women had tractors. Well, Esther does. And she's, she's also the neighborhood preacher on Sunday morning. What? So she owns the store? <laughs> has a tractor that she do, she uses plow, plowing for and she's a preacher on Sunday morning. Yep, that's Esther. That's the great thing about Harrisonville. Everyone ships in no matter their age or no matter if they're a man and women, if they can man or woman. If they can do the job and we can help you, we do. That's great to know, Helen. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. About an hour later, Debbie had finished her chores, and we were ready to go on our girls' outing. The streets of Harrison were, were full, at least by Harrison standards. People were out walking their dogs, and, and children were out playing, and just living their lives. As I walked down the streets, I got the sense that this was not just a town, that it was a family. Pretty soon we came upon the dress shop where Esther Barnes sold dresses for the dance. Because the dance was tonight, I thought the shop would be, would be full. But when we went in there, there was hardly anyone in there. I, I turned I, I turned to Debbie and said I thought the dance was tonight wouldn't everyone be in here trying to get their dress oh no Debbie said everyone got their dress weeks ago when we came in the store. Esther was busy with the customer.
but now she she came over to us and I was introduced to her. Nice to meet you, she said after the introduction. Welcome to Harry. Thank you. She she took a look at me. You're a size six, right? That's right. How did you know that? I can tell a woman's size by just looking at her. I think I have the perfect dress for it. She came, Esther came back about 10 minutes later with the most beautiful dress I'd ever seen. It was blue with a, with, with a sweetheart neckline and sequins all the way down the dress. It looked like a gown. It looked like something I would find at Nordstrom or some high class boutique in New York, not a small town. I stood there stunned. It's beautiful, Esther. Totally beautiful and totally my style. Do you mind if I try it on? No problem. The changing rooms are back there. About 10 minutes later, I came out of the changing room with the dress on. Every, ev everyone from Esther to Helen to Debbie stared at me in wonder. Somebody say something, I said, as they stood there with their mouths hanging open. You look beautiful, absolutely phenomenal, Helen said. I don't know if you're single, Debbie said, but if you are, you won't be after tonight in that dress. I laughed. It looks absolutely stunning on you, Helen agreed. It goes so well with your blonde hair and blue eyes. Do you have any shoes to go with that dress? I asked. Unfortunately, I don't sell shoes here. But there is a shoe store right next door Henrietta's shoes and she'd be happy to help you I'll take the dress it's absolutely beautiful As I went to the change room to take off the dress, while I was in there, I heard a familiar voice. Declan Devereaux, I groaned. Correction, Mayor Declan Devereaux. I said with a heavy sigh. I quickly took off the dress. and put it in the bag that that Esther gave me and came out to the front desk. Sure enough, Declan Devereaux was talking with was talking with Esther, Helen and Debbie when he saw me 
his face turned even more sour than it had been before. He didn't like me as much as I didn't like him. I paid for it. I paid for the dress with my credit card. All was, uh, I paid for the dress with my credit card without talking to him. But I could feel his eyes on me. I, I don't know what his problem was. From yesterday, from yesterday, I could tell that the man didn't like me. What was, what was, the worst thing about it was, he was the one I would have to convince to let Sands and Son buy the, the property. I picked up the bag after I made the purchase and the three of us walked out of the store. Bye, Mayor Deborah, the three ladies said in unison. I just nodded my head. When we got outside, he I noticed him running after us from the store. Wait, Miss Morrow. Wait. I couldn't remember if I had told him my name yesterday. Maybe I had. I turned around. Yes, Mayor Devereaux. I wanted to explain about yesterday. You see, I, I know who you are. And we're not selling anything to any company in New York. So you can take whatever ideas you have back to the city and tell Mr. Sands there's no deal. Please, Mr. Deverell, if I could just have a few minutes of your time, just a few minutes, if it's to talk about the so-called deal that New York, that New York company wants to make with the town, there's no deal. I'm not having the people of this town put out just because some big company likes the land and wants to use it for advertising. I'm not having that. I care too much about the people of this town. So you can go back where you came. As he turned to walk away, I got a brilliant inspiration. Why don't you show me about this town? Why don't you show me why it's a horrible idea to let Sands and Sun buy it. Then I would be able to convince my boss and maybe we can work something out. You see, you see, Mr. Deverell, to them, this is just a piece of land with a few was a few people on it. But to you, this is your hometown, your family, and they need to know that. So why don't, why don't you start tonight by telling me, by showing me about the people of this town and telling me their stories. You can be my date for the dance tonight. That's if you're not married or seeing anyone. For the first time, 
I saw Declan Devereaux smile. No, I'm not married or seeing anyone. And I would love to be your gay. Especially if it's going to help the town that I left so much. Well, I'll see you at the dance at 8. It's it's a deal and a date. As I walked away from Declan Deferil, I prayed that this little plan of mine would get me the mess I created with the mayor. At 7.30 I looked at my reflection for the umpteenth time in the mirror. In the mirror. I took a deep breath. There was nothing else I could do to my, do to my face to, to make it stand out more. And nothing more I can do with the dress to make to make it look to to make it look more fashionable on me. I was ready to go. I took a deep breath and and grabbed the purse that Helen was loaning me for the night. As I got down as I got to the landing of the stairs, I saw Declan Devereaux talking to talking to Roger. I don't know how we're going to do the crops this year, man. Ro Roger said, looking worried. I don't know how either. We. We need them to be good this year, but but it doesn't seem to be working out. I don't know how people are going to feed their families. Never mind other people, Roger said. I don't know how we're going to feed our families. The, the hideaway isn't doing very well, and neither are Neither are the other businesses in town. People are going to start moving away if we can't turn this town around soon. <clears throat> I cleared my throat so that the gentleman would know that I was there. Oh, he oh hello, Miss Morrow. Roger said to me. How are, how are you, Roger? I'm fine. Roger was dressed in a, in a suit that looked two sizes too small for him. He was wearing a grin that spread all the, all the way across his face. That dress looks something on is something on you, he said. Thank you, Roger. You look not too shabby yourself. As I turned to Declan, his brown eyes shot daggers at me. But all he said was, Good evening, Miss Morrow. Good evening, Mr. Devereux. Mr. Devereux.
boy, you guys are formal. Roger laughed. People deserve formality. They're too good for us. Declan said with a snark. With the hint of snarkiness in his voice. Well, maybe it's not that. Some people are too good for others, but maybe it's just that some people don't make others feel comfortable, so they deserve a Mr. Deborah. Whoa, I don't know what's going on here, Rogers, Roger said, pointing between us, but leave me out of it, please. Roger hold, held up his hands in a gesture of surrender. I'm sorry, Roger, buddy. De Declan said, putting his arm around his friend. It's just that some people, he emphasized the word, rub me the wrong way. I gave a frustrated sigh. If this was, was how he was going to act all night, it was definitely going to be a long run. About ten minutes later, the other two ladies ap appeared. Debbie had a beautiful green gown on. And Esther had, had a purple a purple skirt and black blouse with little purple earrings dangling from her ears. Shall we go? Debbie said. After you, honey. Debbie stepped out. Up Helen's hideaway. Followed by the rest of us. Me and Declan trailed behind the others. I'm trying my best, I said to him in a voice that no one else could hear. To be civil. If you could try and be civil, that would be great. I said. Okay, okay, I'll try and be simple. But it's just that the thought that a big company wants to buy our land and kick us out doesn't make me want to shout hallelujah or anything. As I told you, why don't you tell me about the town over the next couple days and Maybe I can get my boss to change his mind. We're not enemies here. We want the same things. Yeah, right. All you want is for your company to buy my to buy my town. I took another deep breath. There's going to be no reasoning with you. You got that right. I love these people too much. 
to quote unquote reason them out of their homes. This town has been in my family for several generations and there is no way that I'm gonna let some blonde beauty waltz in and buy it from us. No way on God's green earth. I thought tonight was to be, was to show me why this town is worth so much to you. Not to antagonize me and make me matter. He took a deep breath. We're gonna get nowhere. We're snarking at each other. So let's just try and get along. I'll introduce you to some people tell you some of these stories and we'll dance and have a have a good time can we call it truce for now I said truce he stretched out his hand truce I stretch out my release the dance was done in a big room with a refreshment table on one side and a dance floor in the middle. People were milling, milling around, laughing and talking. About a half an hour after we got there, the music started. It was no surprise that it was country music. I thought there would be a live band. But, there was only a DJ booth in the corner of the barn. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Helen being asked to dance by a tall, gray-haired, gray good-looking man. <coughs> Declan saw where I was pointing where I was looking and he pointed out. That man dancing with Henry, dancing with Helen, his name is Henry. Henry worked in finance, high finance in New York until the stock market crash of 2008 when he couldn't find a job. He turned to drinking and his life was really going down the tubes until my father discovered he was really good with numbers and sat down with him one day and found, found out Henry's story. And then my father, along with the rest of his family, put, got the money together so that Henry was able to work it, get his accounting license, and work as a chartered accountant. Instead of, instead of going back to New York or some big city, Henry, Henry with all his education and all his, all his knowledge about the financial markets, he decided to come back here to Paris and take over managing the bank. About 15 minutes later, a young pregnant lady, a young pregnant lady in her 20s came over with a, with a man who I assumed to be her husband. Declan introduced them to me as Heather and Jerry Denton. How was the baby? Oh, she's fine. Heather smiled at you. 
as she patted her cheek. She really likes country music, so maybe she'll be a singer. And we all laughed. How many weeks till you do this? Only two. Only two. She said. Smiling at me. Honey. Heather's husband said from behind her. Didn't you say you needed to talk to Mrs. Granger about the church social? Oh, yes. Well, she's over there. Well, if you two would excuse me, Heather said with a point. I have to go meet me read. All right, Heather. I said, nice to meet you. You too, Claire. Hopefully I'll see you around. Hopefully, yes. Bye. She waved and followed her husband out of, out of our sight. She seems like a nice girl, I said to the club. Yes, she is a very nice girl. Heather has an amazing story. When she was only three days old, Mrs. Brown found her on her doorstep with a note saying, Take care of my daughter. No explanation. No nothing. The town got together and got the legal papers for, for Miss Brown to take her in it as a foster kid and then eventually a year later, adopt her. Heather, Heather is known in this town as Paris's child because although Mrs. Brown is the one who adopted her, we all had some part in raising her. And her husband, his father was the lawyer who handled the adoption years ago. And after his father died, he wanted to meet her. So he came to town, not only met her, fell in love with her, and after expecting their first baby. Heather's story really made me feel warm inside. About, about 10 minutes, minutes later, Hi. Hold on just one sec. I'm here. Hold on.
hold on just one second. Hi, Rachel. Hi. This is Meryl. Why do you yeah. why do hold you on. Well, I said, I guess it reminds me of what I didn't have growing up. What do you mean? Well, my parents were divorced when I was young. And before they were divorced, they didn't really get along too well. Always fighting and arguing and bickering and huh. all kinds of frustration for me as a kid. My home never felt emotionally safe. I was not physically abused, but I did everything to to, to not go home at night, because when I did, it would be a whole bunch of stress for me. And this song kind of sent me, sent me into dreaming that maybe someday I would meet someone that would take me away, who would take me away from all of this, who would take me away from all the chaos and havoc of my life. Even then I knew it was stupid because you're supposed to, because every, everyone has to make themselves happy. I knew that even then, but the thought was nice. So every time I, every time I hear it now, I would dream of it. I, I kind of am nostalgic about that whole thing. There's somebody riding off with me as the sunset to a place of peace and tranquility. What about you? How were your growing up years? Were you close with your parents? Well, my, mo my mother died when I was a little baby. And my father, although he was a good man looking back, he wasn't the touchy feely kind of guy. He, he didn't take me to baseball games and throw a ball around with me and do fatherly things so fast. And I kind of resented him for it. Here I saw all these little boys doing all kinds of neat things with my dad. With their dad and my dad. Couldn't even bother to sit with me and do my homework. Or talk. Just for a few minutes to ask how I was. Oh, I'm sorry, Declan. Me too. So that, that made me a bit angry, and so I rebelled. I did everything that a kid would do. I played with guns and got into drugs, started hanging out with the wrong crowd, made a mess of my life. When I was 17, I got arrested for doing pot with, with my friends, after my dad bailed me out, instead of saying thank you, I took off. 
and I never, and I never came back until the funeral. Oh, Declan, I'm so sorry. See, that's why I try so hard to be the best man that I can be, to show my, to give my father wherever, up in heaven, something to be proud of me, to show, to show him that I made it. That's one of the reasons, but I can't let you, I can't let Santa and Son buy this company, buy this town, it meant too much to my father, and it means too much to me. The people of this town love each other. We're always there for each other when, when we need something. When one of us cries, we all cry. When one of us feels joy, we all feel joy. A warm feeling began to spread over me. I'd never had that. I'd always had parents that, that, that put, that talked bad about each other and put me in the middle. I never felt that sense of love and safety. And tears began to pool in my eyes. I blinked, I blinked them back so that they wouldn't fall. But it was too late. A tear slipped down my cheek. Declan looked into my eyes and put his hand on my face and said, Are you all right? Did I say something to upset you? No, no. I, I never had that sense of safety and security, and I always wanted it. Could we leave now? I asked in a whisper. Or do you have some more, some duty to do as mayor? No, no. They can handle it. I'll take you back to Helen's Highway. As we drove back in silence, I knew, despite the fact that it had only been two days, I was falling hard for this man. He was gentle, he was kind, he really cared. And despite his hard exterior, his interior was soft as marshmallows. And I knew I wanted, and crazy as it sounded, I knew I wanted to, to spend more time with him to see where this could go. When we pulled up to Helen's highway, he held the door open for me. As I got out, I almost, I almost slipped to the ground, but he reached out and grabbed me around the, around the waist. After I had righted myself, he still didn't let go. He tilted my chin up, and before I knew it, he was kissing me. A kiss that said everything I wanted to say. A kiss with all the longing that I was feeling in my heart. As I, as our lips touched and melded together. I knew that this night would change my life, and I knew that I had to get my boss to change his mind or come up with another plan for Sam's and son. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but at that moment, I didn't care. I knew that this town and these people and their kindness and generosity and love towards me. 
had to stay together. When, when he took his head, when he took his lips from mine, I, I was missing the contact. And as I, st uh, as he released me from his arms, I could tell he, he was missing the contact between us just like I was. I walked slowly, hesitantly away from him and into the bed and breakfast. As I got ready for bed, all I can think of was his eyes peering down at me as we were dancing and the kiss we shared when he dropped me home. I didn't know how it happened, but within a matter of days I had fallen head over heels for this man. And I knew that I had to come up with another solution to the town that he loved and, and that I was going to love too. The next morning I woke up to the smell of pancakes and bacon. I flung the covers off and headed downstairs to where Helen was making bacon. Debbie was sitting at the table with Roger eating. And as I came in further to the kitchen, I saw Declan, Declan sitting at the table with us, with them. Well, good morning, he said, with a wide smile. Good morning, I replied back. What are you doing here so early? Well, I thought I would continue your lessons about this town by showing you what I do for my real job as a farmer. I'm mayor, yes, but the, but the job I love in this town is farming. Are you game for it? Yeah, sure, I'm game for it. Just let me have some breakfast first. No problem. Meet me by the chicken coop. I sat down to, to eat at the table as he took his jacket to, to leave. When he was gone, I, I had Helen, Debbie, and Roger both stare at me. Well, 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 what's going on there? Debbie asked with her hand, with her hand on her face, eyes inquip, inquisitive. I feigned innocence. What's going on where? With you and Mayor Devereaux. Oh, nothing. He just wants to prove to me what he just has some business with me. That's all. Business, huh? Looks more like monkey business. Roger said. Helen over by the soap said now you two stop that if she likes if Claire likes Mary Devereaux and Mary Devereaux likes her 
We have no business to interfere. Thank you, Helen. Just as long as we can we can have the money here and not some fancy dancy country club in New York. Oh, Helen, I said with a smile. After breakfast, I went out. Roger gave me directions to the chicken coop. I went out and saw Declan already there. Now the aim of this, he said with a smile, is to get all the chickens into the coop. Oh, that should be easy, I said. That shouldn't be hard. It is hard when they're finished when they're finished laying their eggs and all they want to do is lay around. I can do it no problem. What do what do I do? He showed he showed me how to round up the chickens and into the coop coop one time. When I tried it Though all the chickens ran away, and I spent the, about 15 minutes trying to chase after them. By the time the whole chicken coop fiasco was over, he tried to hide a smile when he said, want to try milking a cow? Yeah, sure. After all, it was a cow that brought me here. So I guess it's some kind of kind, kind of weird kind of weird penance that I have to pay. Now I have to milk one. He gave me a demonstration of how to hold the teeth and how to press down lightly with my with my thumb and fourth finger. When I when I when I saw him, I said, "Oh, this looks easy." So I he let me give it a try. When I when I tried to squeeze the cow's teeth, the milk got all over me instead of in the basket. I tried again, the same thing happened. And I could tell he was trying to hide a smile. The same thing went with trying to feed the pigs. and to feed the other animals. I almost killed the wheat when I tried to drive the tractor. He was sitting right beside me the whole time. I said, Declan, I'm a city girl. I'm, I'm not cut out for this when we were sitting sitting in the tractor after the wheat fiasco. That's okay. Why don't we get changed and I'll take you to lunch. You're taking me to lunch? Yeah, sure, I've got to feed you. 
I can't just put you to work and expect you to have no food for, for over two hours. For over six hours. I looked down at my watch and it had been about six hours since we'd started work. Since we've started the farm work that morning. I went into my room and, and changed for lunch. I didn't know what restaurant we were going to and I couldn't wait to find out. What restaurant are we going to? I said when we when we were both buckled in. He didn't answer me. I, I said, I suppose he wanted it to be a surprise. As we drove, I couldn't wait to see what restaurants they had had had, had in Harris. I didn't remember seeing any al along the way, but maybe I missed it. I thought to myself. As we drove and drove and I didn't see a restaurant, I began to wonder. Hey, hey Declan, I said, I thought we were going for lunch at a restaurant. I didn't say we were going to a restaurant. I said I have to take you to lunch. Uh, so, where are we going then? He didn't say anything. Resigned. I knew I just had to sit back and wait. It was about 20, 20 more minutes until we came to an airstrip. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of my, my eyes. It was, it was a small jet plane. No more than a, a four-seater. What are we doing at an airstrip? Going to lunch, he smiled when he opened the door for me. As we walked onto, onto the runway and we got ready to board the plane, my stomach was in knots. It was not that I was afraid of flying, it's just that I didn't do it often. The plane's, the plane's ready for you, Declan. A man said when we got to, onto the, onto the runway ready to board. Thanks, Charles. I really appreciate it. Declan held the door for, for me to the cockpit. We're flying to our destination for lunch? Yes, we are. Who's flying the plane? I am. 
My mouth hung open. I looked at Declan in shock. You mean you are the pot, the tow truck driver, the mayor, and the pilot? Yes, ma'am. I didn't know you even had your pilot's license. I do. He helped, he finished helping me up into the seat and made sure I was buckled in securely. After he did his circle check and checked in with the control tower, we were on. I couldn't believe the beauty around me. It was, it was past noon and the sun was high in the sky. It looked like we, Harris looked like a bunch of little houses and little streets as we flew over it. I could see the birds beside us and the whole thing was so peaceful. I had, I had never seen beauty like this in New York or anywhere else I had been. I was total, I was so in awe that I didn't speak to Declan for the whole ride. About 45 minutes later, About 45 minutes later, we come to a landing strip. And before I knew it, Declan was getting ready to, to land the plane. He operated it with such ease and such confidence. He must have had his pilot's license for a long time. I wondered, I secretly wondered about the story behind that. I would ask him later. And then when we, we touched down on the ground, Declan unbuckled himself and then made sure I knew how to and buckle myself securely. And then he came around to the passenger side of the plane. The co the co pilot side of the plane and helped me get down. When I stepped off out of the plane, I looked around me. It was beyond beautiful the green grassy landscape and and everything around me was so majestic and beautiful it took my breath away seagulls flew and everything was just so bright and quiet and serene I was almost afraid to speak because the moment would be interrupted. He leaned over to me. Beautiful, isn't it? He whispered. It's, it's beyond beautiful. There are no words for what I'm seeing right now. We walked a, a few meters and when we stopped walking, I saw in front of me a picnic table with a basket and cups and a tablecloth spread on it. I covered my mouth in shock. A picnic! You were planning a picnic! Look that way, he smiled. I had never felt such joy over seeing a simple picnic. 
not, not to mention it was past one o'clock by this time and my stomach was grumbling. We walked hand in hand to the picnic table and sat down. As Declan opened the uh, opened the picnic basket, there were ham and cheese sandwiches. A, f a few, a few biscuits, and fruit juices that we can pick from. That we can pick from. I had an apple juice, a ham and cheese sandwich, and a fruit biscuit. Declan had a ham and cheese sandwich. A, a biscuit and some orange juice. Before we started eating, Declan bowed his head to pray silently. When he lifted his head, we both started eating. It's beautiful out here, I said in wonder. You don't get anything like this peaceful. You don't get anything this peaceful in New York. See? Now how do you feel about Sands and Sun buying Harris? He looked at me intently, really waiting for my answer. I don't, I don't think we should, and I've been com I've been coming up with a few ideas in my head. But before we get into that, how did you manage to get your pilot pilot's license? Well, when I ran away from home, l like I told you, um, a, ma a pilot took me in and straightened me out. He was a man just like my father, very into rules and what's right and what's moral and and he talked about God a lot and he was really into his home and family. He had two boys and they showed me how, how to really be a man and He also taught me how to fly my first plane. I remember being 18 and being up there and being so scared, but he was so generous and with me every step of the way. He taught me everything I need to know. So when I was about 22, he paid for me to get my pilot's license. Because I had already had so much training from him, I aced, I aced my aviation license and was able to fly planes in half the time that the other students finished the course. Wow. That's amazing. It helps when stu when students come from out of town and, or when people want to go somewhere that the mayor can fly a plane. 
It also helps when I need to go out of town for my own business. It's a useful skill to have. It's an amazing skill to have. I wish I had a skill like that. The only skill I have is to is to is to come up with advertising campaigns. How long have you been doing? I started about 10 years ago. Fresh out of college. I was 21 and didn't know what to do. And I saw advertising and in a catalog. And I applied to the program and got in. And then right after college I got a job with Sands and Sun. So between college and Sands and Sun, it's been about five it's been about ten years since I've been in the advertising game. Oh, very interesting. Declan smiled. There was silence for a, for a minute. Well, do you have any ideas of how we could save the town and appease your boss at the same time? Well, yes, I'm starting to get one. I told him my idea. I told Declan my idea. And he smiled. I hope it works, he says. I hope so too. This town is so peaceful and so much like home and so much like what I didn't get growing up. I would hate to see some somebody buy it and use it for advertising buildings. Me too. You told me yesterday about your about your parents and their divorce and you never feeling like you have a, had a home. Yes, that that's right. I, I never felt secure growing up. And that caused me to to be so driven to win because that gives me that gave me security knowing that I could provide for myself and knowing that I didn't need it. You said it gave you security. What do you mean by that? I took a deep breath. It gave me security before, before I met you. And now I can't even imagine going back to that lonely life where I just have my career to consider. It sounds weird, but I think I'm falling in love with you, Declan. I took a deep breath out, waiting for his answer. He leaned over And, and gave me a kiss that I could never forget. After the kiss was over, he said, I, th he said, I think I'm falling in love with you too, Claire. I just wasn't sure that you, that you would want to stay here with me. Are you kidding? The people are so nice and warm. Of course I want to stay here with you. Let's hope Mr. Sands likes your idea. Let's hope so. And even if he doesn't, I'll, I will start my own advertising firm right here in Harris.
you would do that really leave New York? Sure I would. Because everything I love is here. Home. It feels like home here. It would be a great place to raise a family if that, if that's something you're into in the future. Definitely. You kissed me again. I have to go back to New York for a few days and pack up my stuff and tell my boss the plan. But I will be back. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. You're back, Claire, Mr. Sand said, as I as I sat in his office a week later. How did it go? Do you have a report for me? Yes, sir, I do. I, I slid the report that I've been working on in the three days since I got back. How was your trip? Are they are they willing to sell to Sands and Son? No, sir. I don't think that's a wise idea. Instead, Harris is a town full of people with, with love in their hearts for each other. And, and, a willingness to help anyone that comes across their path. When, when I stayed there, they welcomed me with open arms. I don't think it's right to buy the whole town off of them and rebuild it. But I do have another suggestion. Why don't we rent, why don't we come up with an agreement where we can rent spaces as we need them? We don't need to buy the whole town and chase people out of where they're living. We just need to, we just need to rent the space so that, that way everyone's happy we still get what we want and they have what what they want without upheaval and any hassle for them and it would still be something that no other advertising agency has done before renting the space interesting idea I like it. Really? I said with a, with a big smile on my face. Yes, I like it. The promotion, your work on this, on this account, Claire, is totally exceptional. And if we're going to be renting spaces all the time, for our clients, and clients are going to be renting spaces from us, I need someone in charge in Harris. And, and that someone should be you. You know the people, you know the town, and, and it's obvious, and it's obvious from your face, you love the people and the town and you have a passion for them and their well-being. So, the promotion may not have been the one you wanted, but it's definitely the one, right one for you. Yes, it is, Mr. Sands. Thank you very much. You won't regret putting me in charge in Harry. I know I won't. 
Now, I think a I think a certain mayor is waiting for you. You better get back to, to your home, he said with a wink and a smile. Mr. Sands, how did you know? Well, I may, I've been living. Well, I may be an old man, but I'm not adverse to matchmaking. You mean that you set us up? Yes, you can't blame an old man for trying. I've seen your years of work here, and you, you've never, you've never, as far as I know, have mentioned a boyfriend or a date. So I thought when I was looking at this project and I saw that, that it was a young man in charge, I thought, well, maybe it would work. And if it didn't, oh well. But I'm so glad it did, honey. You deserve it. Thank you, Mr. Sands. I won't let you down. I know you won't. Well, you better drive down before it gets too late. Yes, I will, Mr. Sands. Thank you again. Do you mind if I hug you? No, not at all. I hugged my boss and then headed down the road and into Harris. When I got there, it was nightfall. I went straight to, to Declan's home and rang the doorbell. He, he came to the door looking s sleepy and rumpled and oh so good. How did it go? He, he said as soon as he saw me. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Declan's face fell. He agreed to the plan Sands and Son, when we need it, is going to rent the space. The spaces we need and nobody will have to move from from anywhere. I'm so I'm so proud of you you did it. He hugged me and then gave me a gave me a big kiss. And can you can you believe I laughed? Mr. Sands set us up. What? How? When he saw that you were single and I was single, he sent me over here. And, <laughs> and the rest is history. Declan, Declan smiled his big smile. Well, I'm going to have to send him a gift for bringing you to me. Before you, after my father died, my life was lonely and it had no purpose. I had my work and all the different tasks I do as mayor and everything else, but I had no one to share it. You brought life, light into my life and I was so grateful. Well, the same goes for me. Before I met you, all I had was my work. And love had been a dream that I had not been able to obtain. I thought about it, but at the time, I figured it was too much work, so I just didn't pursue it. But you brought such light and such joy into my life. We kissed, and he spun me around. Hey, you finally got your wish. 
what wish I said with a smile touching his cheeks well I'm a cowboy I have a plane and I took you away <laughs> I laughed and thought about and thought about it you know you're right It's been two years since I moved from New York to Harris. Declan and I dated for a year and then got married. We are expecting our first child any day now. And he's so cute being the doting daddy. How could I have ever lived without him? He, he is certainly my cowboy who has taken me away. That's for sure. The end. Thank you guys for listening to this story time Sunday. I know it was long. I hope you stick with the video because the story is awesome. Um, join me every Sunday um, for story time Sunday. God bless. Thanks. Bye. leave a comment on this video let me know how much you enjoyed it or if you didn't like it you can let me know that too um you can always email me as well my email address is lady.rachel24 at gmail.com that's lady.rachel24 at gmail.com thanks bye